What is like good, Nimbam? Welcome back to this week's Team Health Ultimate Champion stream for Game Week 164. With me, as always, is the fabulous Speedy Q. How are you doing? What's been going on? Good day, uh, listeners, and thank you so much for having me once again. Uh, Nim, all very well on my side. Um, we've had an exciting last week on Ultimate Champions. Uh, obviously, on the weekend, you were part of it. Uh, we ha held that very cool uh, Champions uh, Ultimate Champions football watch party. Uh, lots of rewards, lots of spinning wheels, um, and, and obviously a little live watch party of the Arsenal uh, Brighton game, which which ended positively uh, for our team once again, which was fantastic. Uh, we've obviously been releasing uh, all of the Elitserin uh, clubs whose season uh, started a couple of game weeks ago. Uh, so Lilstrom, Odd and Moldy uh, were released uh, this past week, uh, which is good. So we have seven of the 16 clubs uh, that have been released already, which is great news. Uh, the summer buyback basically completed the summer buyback uh, refund. For the Versa Liga, Vekas Liga, and Bester Dalden, which we are not going to have coverage for uh, in Ultimate Champions anymore. Um, and then we also released Slovakian uh, winter transfers. So that's Slovakian athletes that we never had assets of previously. That has been released. Um, and then on the basketball side, uh, we ran a cool uh, random uh, spinning wheel competition for four lucky uh, participants to go to the final, the EuroLeague final four um, that's going to be in Berlin, uh, Germany. Uh, so they have each won uh, four tickets to that. So it's been an exciting week. Yeah, I love, I absolutely love the match watch long. I know it's a lot of work for you, but I had a lot <laughs> of fun and it was really good engaging with everyone. And it was just absolute carnage, which I love. <laughs> I enjoy, what I enjoy, what I enjoy about it is, is, is you see all the guys pulling together. So a lot of them were assisting in who won this, who won that and things like that. And not just leaving it uh, to me, which was really, really appreciated. Um, I think it's a fun event, obviously giving back to our, our community, uh, having a couple of uh, rewards on offer. Um, and, and what was nice is the rewards were actually spread around quite nicely. I think barring one or two managers who, who won uh, two, two awards, it was spread, uh, spread um, to, to quite a few that participated, uh, which was fantastic. Yeah, I needed one more goal in the Bundesliga to win. One more. <laughs> it was desperate. I was like, come on, just a Xhaka goal will do it. I don't mind. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was great. I had a lot of fun. So thank you so much for doing that, Speedy. It, it was it was yeah, it was it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, right, okay then. Let's um have a look based on what Speedy there just said now with uh, getting some prizes and some competitions and we too run our own competitions here. So before we get into all of the nitty gritty, I just wanted to give a shout out to last week's Silver Pack winner uh, who guessed the top scoring elite Siren athlete in game week 162 and that was Uno. Uh, with Matt Smola at the hill with 265 points. So well done, buddy. Let's have some claps in the chat for that. So um, I think Uno might have won once or twice here before. So I recognize the name and, and that, was, that was a good guess. Right, Speedy? Yeah, yeah, very well done. Uh, Uno does. Um, I can't remember if he has won before, but he does. He does listen to us quite, quite regularly, and and he puts his predictions in on a on a weekly basis. Uh, it was amazing score. I think the closest uh, 
prediction that came close to him was, uh, I can't think of the athlete, but I think it was 195 points. So to have a, a base score of 265 points is massive. So very, very well done. Uh, Uno, I think I've got your details, but just to be safe, so I don't have to search for it, uh, send me a DM with your UC manager name and email address, and I'll uh, get that packed through to you before the game week starts tomorrow. Nice. Okay, then, with all of that, and I can see there's a, a fair few of you in already. We've got Bosun, we've got uh, Nazareth, we've got HK, Migsin, JRPX, uh, Soccer Crazy, Antonio, Ahaz. Hey, guys, and Radu's just joined us. So with that, we'll uh, move on to our question for this week's Silver Pack Prize. Speedy. Question once again. One once again, it's for a, a silver pack. Uh, we'll change it up a little bit. So it will be which athlete will score the most possessive points in game week 164. So that's just your possessive highlight points. Uh, which athlete will score the most? Um, you can you can drop your UC manager name and the name uh, and the name and surname or the initial and surname of, of the athlete in the uh, in the in the comments, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe the the stream. Um, and yeah, thank you for supporting and good luck. Uh, look forward to seeing all the predictions. Yeah, I'm just popping it in the chat so we have it um, there. Cool. Right. All right then. So as we aim to show you when we've had a good game week, not to boast, maybe to boast a little. But uh, to help show you how it can be done, <laughs> I wanted to <laughs> share my game week uh, 162 All-Stars podium finish where I came third place with 2,589 points, uh, which got me 1,100 UNA, 2,400 MGC. Some uh, shout-outs being to Helik with his 350 points, Getting a little bit of bench jam with Jacka off of the bench for Palacios, um, Odegaard captain, and of course I have to mention Markovic, who I fully forgot about. Posted in the in, in Discord saying I'm I'm all done. I'm 13th. I hope I can hold on because <laughs> I completely <laughs> forgot about <laughs> Markovic, who was to go. Um, because he's only really shown up once ever for me in the time that I've owned him. So I wasn't, I guess, I've just forgotten about him. And uh, he was pretty much just placed in there to, to be able for me to enable uh, entering that tournament, right? But boy, did he put some weight in with his 286 points. Very unexpected, but extremely happy, Speedy. Fantastic, fantastic uh, team selection. Um, the only the only gentleman that let us down was uh, Mr. Bart Myers. Um, the last two game weeks, for some reason, he's been sitting on the on the bench. Um, but to do this in the All Stars Pro, you must remember the All Stars Pro. There is no cap. Um, so yes, you have higher divisions um, in the All Stars, uh, but in the All Stars Pro, you can put any player, uh, no matter what cap, have in it. And for you to come. Third, even with a, a, a 71 pointer from Bart Myers, is really, really a fantastic uh, achievement. Very proud of you. A uh, great amount of UNA and MGC earned. Um, it obviously helped us uh, rip that uh, Litzerin gold a little earlier, yeah. uh, which was great. Um, so, once again, Nim, very, very well played. Oh, thank you. And you had a little warning off of the back of this with, with the captaincy, didn't you? Yes, I did. I, I didn't do too well in in game week one sixty two. I came I came fifteenth in the UC Star Division, so there was a little bit of winner and MGC. Uh, I did score two thousand two hundred and sixty eight points, and that was with my captain, my captain uh, Ezekiel Palacios, mythic not playing at all. I had no bench cover, uh, so be very very careful. Uh, obviously, especially moving into this game week with a number of our top teams. Uh, involved in Europe and the Champions League. Uh, if you do select any of them and you're not sure if they're going to start, always have some cover uh, or maybe potentially play the the bench trick uh, where you put a do not play in your midfield or your defense or your or your forwards and, and then you cover your 
your bench slots with those midfielders just in case someone is rotated or or doesn't play. Um, so yes, but otherwise, uh, I know I would have done quite well if I had a captain, so I'm still quite positive. It's not always going to work out every game week, but at least my partner in crime, Nim, you did fantastically well. Oh, thank you. I think um, the thing with uh, Palacios is that you want to be on him early, don't you? So as soon as he is back and playing like you know 90 90 minutes most of the time you want you want him in your team so that's where the subjects kind of handy but it it is tough because as soon as you place him in your team you want to put that captaincy armband on him for sure so 100 percent. We, we, we will discuss uh leverkusen and then further uh, a little later in the stream but it's very important moving forward because Leverkusen can potentially clinch the Bundesliga title on, on Sunday, I think it is, against Bremen. Um, and if they do that, um, there's five games left of the season and they don't necessarily need to play their top players, if, especially if they are uh, con- going to continue being involved in, in, in the Europa League, etc. So it's something to take note of um, for the big teams, as I mentioned, that are in Europe. Um, and like especially Leverkusen, who potentially will will win the Bundesliga title and potentially uh, rotate a bit. Uh, on the other hand, they might want to go unbeaten like they have been so far for the whole season. So they might not uh, do too much rotation, but they seem to have a fairly decent squad. Uh, so only time will tell. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, then. Um, don't forget, guys, uh, we do have some questions already in our um in our little discord channel so if you want to go put any more there you can or do leave some in the chat as well so speedy let's recap on last stream's tips so how did our players get on please thanks very much and they did they did pretty decently except for one um but we had uh maziani my leader uh, he proved his consistency again since his loan move uh, from Hertha Earth Berlin. They, he, he really lost. Uh, he never scored or assisted. However, because of his possessive stats, still managed a base UC score of 150 points. Uh, what's important, I think, uh, if if I look at UC in general, um, I think 80% of your forwards could be, other than your, your left and right backs, um, could be worse scorers unless they score a goal and an assist. And it is very rare to have a striker uh, that has great possession stats. Um, And this is why I think this gentleman is a standout athlete uh, to own and play in your UC lineups uh, regularly. Um, Hibernian is also seems to be, or or seems that they're going to be in the relegation rounds um, when the final after the final match is played this weekend um, and he could potentially even score bigger because then they'll be playing teams that are below them on the lock so definitely something to look out for there uh, the second player was Kasper Oivan from Molde uh, Molde have had a great start to the season they've played two they've kept two consecutive clean sheets uh, Kasper scored 195 UC base points which was mainly made up of possessive and defensive and clean sheet points uh, if you own him already keep him uh, if you want to buy him, <laughs> he's very expensive. I saw two epics on the marketplace, I think over $150 uh, each. Uh, there's, there's great demand, especially for the newer players that are being released on, on Norway at the moment. So uh, if you don't get them in a pack um, uh, or win them some other way, uh, they're going to be pretty pricey for your for your top top uh, echelon players, if I can put it that way. Um, he will be available, as I mentioned, in Elite in packs uh, because we did release Moldy new season cards uh, yesterday. So if you're lucky enough to to get him in whichever pack you open, uh, then well done to you. And then our failure of the week, uh, Mr. Bart Finn, uh, I think we chatted about him last week being potentially the top goal scorer seeing that uh, Pellegrino has left. That can still happen. It's only the second game and he, he did score in his first uh, in his first game. Um, but if you compare him to um, Mazzolida, which we mentioned earlier, I went to and had a look at his previous history and there, there's there's not there hasn't been a lot of consistency where it's a, 
a stream of, of green UC scores. So he needs to kind of score or assist uh, to be able to get a decent score. Um, he is playing for a, a good team. Brand hasn't had the best of, of, of starts to the season, so things can change. Um, so just be, be careful um, with him moving forward, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. I think I noticed in the Discord that there were a few people who were a bit let down by Finn this week. So <laughs> I don't think we were the only ones. <laughs> right. Okay, then, buddy. How did our teams get on? On the on the team side, um, we had Hibernian. Uh, as I mentioned, they went down to uh, St. John, St. Johnston. Uh, so they're probably going to be resigned to the relegation rounds. I think they are they're still one point behind Dundee, but Dundee have two games in hand. So Dundee would have to lose to, I think, Aberdeen and Rangers. Uh, their Rangers game has actually been postponed twice, um, strangely enough. Um, and then they would have to win their final game, which is this is this weekend. Like I said, it may be a positive for UC managers for the who own the Abernian athletes to have them in the relegation uh, round. It's not that they're going to be relegated. They'll be top of that relegation round uh, starting, but they will play only against the teams that are lower than them. That can obviously increase um, and, and give a little bit more consistent scoring to the Hibernian uh, UC athletes. I just want to mention, um, uh, I think it's FBL Thinker always asks each week about the capped all the low cap players, etc. I did suggest uh, Chris Cadden um, along with Carl Knoyle uh, last week, if I'm not mistaken. And Cadden actually, even though they lost, uh, he he was on the scoring sheet. So uh, he was a decent uh, low cap selection if you did select him uh, for game week 162. Then yeah. I'll move. I've not seen Thinker Sorry, yet no. today, believe it or not. <laughs> not seen him yet. <laughs> <laughs> One time he. he, he... You've uh, you've got him covered, and he's not here. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. Um, and then on to Moldy. Uh, they've yet to concede a goal this season, as I mentioned. They played two and one two. Uh, they could have won more convincingly against Hamcom, but once again, Sandberg. If you remember, I mentioned he made eight saves the game before. He was he was on form once again, uh, making five saves against Moldy. Otherwise, that scoreline could have been a little bit uh, bigger. Um, and Moldy sits on top of the log in the early stages by goal difference. Uh, they also have a home fixture against uh, newly promoted Christian Suntu, who hasn't actually started the season too badly with a win and a draw. Uh, so that will be intriguing to see how last year's first division qualifiers uh, play against this year's early leaders. And then last but not least, uh, Bran. They lost to newly promoted Frederikstadt. Uh, they had, listen to this, and they lost 2 0, but they had 79% of the ball possession. Yeah. Now, last week, last week I mentioned they, they won their first game. I think it was against Lilstrom. I'm speaking out of correction, 4 2. Uh, so, early signs show that they might not be defensively sound uh, as, as they've conceded four, um, oh, six, or, uh, four goals, apologies, in, in two matches already. Um, so, very. If we're going to focus on anyone moving forward, especially these these early stages of the season, I would say look at your midfielders and forwards, and and just uh, put the defenders on us until they un, until they show some solidity at the back. Yeah, lots of lots of goals going in, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> which, it. Which makes it hard to pick <laughs> defenders. <laughs> That's it. But but with that with that possession, it brings back that adage: you need to put the ball in the back of the net to win a match. I mean, having seventy nine percent possession, um, it was similar to City versus Arsenal. Okay, they, City probably didn't have seventy nine percent, but they had um, a lot of possession. Uh, but they obviously couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Anyway, that's how we got on, and that, and that is in the past. But we're moving forward now. Is on to on to newer days, and and we want to look at game week one six four now, Speedy, and let's chat about the teams to focus on. So the first one I'm going to focus on is obviously by Leverkusen. They're 16 points ahead um, of the mighty Bayern Munich with six matches left. They unbeaten. They've won 24, drawing four out of their 28 matches to date. They have scored 69 goals and only conceded 19. Funny story about this. Um, obviously, I sent to my one of my colleagues in UC to 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 make these nice assets that we have for the stream. 
Uh, and when I sent the goals for and goals against for Leverkusen, he actually replied back and said, are you sure this is correct? <laughs> and I said, yes, yes, it is. They're having a phenomenal season. 69 goals uh, scored, 19 conceded. Uh, as I mentioned, they have a chance to clinch the Bundesliga title for the first time in their history this weekend. I think they just need a win um, against Bremen at home this weekend. Uh, they've had an amazing Bundesliga season. Every single athlete basically in their squad uh, has performed admirably, even when there's been injuries and people have come in uh, to fill those spots, etc. Uh, like your Schicks, uh, your Andriches, etc. They've they've really performed well. Uh, great squad that that Chubby's got going there. Uh, but like we mentioned earlier, keep your eyes. They play West Ham tonight in the Europa um, League. Keep your keep your eyes peeled on that game. Watch what happens. See who their starting lineup is. Um, and that could potentially assist you if there are any niggles or injuries. Also, keep watching the news uh, surrounding them up until uh, the kickoff of our of our game at 164 tomorrow. Like I say, uh, I potentially think they would play a strong enough team on 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 Sunday just to clinch the Bundesliga legal t- uh, league title and and put it behind them, and they've got it. And then, like I say, they've got the other thing chasing of being uh, invincible. Uh, for the whole season. So keep tabs on what is happening there. But like I say, if everyone's playing, any selection from Bayer Leverkusen is basically great for for any of your divisions uh, that you're allowed to play them in. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I think Jacques was a a few of my answers in in the match day. (laughs) Um, Just because I was like, going all in on the the how many points you know the best points and stuff like that so yeah i think he he appeared a few times uh they're just having a cracking season aren't they really unreal unreal uh memories of the of the arsenal invincibles uh back in the day when i was younger mm-hmm. um and how well they played and 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 i think they deserve it and and i would like to see them get to the end of the season um uh, being unbeaten etc because they've had such a phenomenal uh run yeah uh, who was our uh, sex, second team? <laughs> second team. I'm I'm choosing one one of our newly pro- I'm choosing one of our newly promoted elite uh teams, which is Christian Sint. Um, they ended fourth overall in the Norwegian first division last season and qualified for the promotion playoffs. They then beat Brynn and uh, Kornsvanger, uh to earn a place in the promotion relegation match against Valeringa. Um, there were two legs of that game. Uh, Valeringa, I think, won the first one 2-0. Um, Christian Sund won the next one 2-0 and then beat Valeringa for promotion on penalties. Uh, they have begun, as I mentioned a little earlier, their life in the Norwegian top division with a, with a victory and a draw. They are currently sitting third. Yes, it is still early days, but a great litmus test will be this weekend. As I mentioned, they will play... Moldy, um, who you could rate with Boda and a couple of other teams as the top teams uh, potentially in the elites are in. Uh, so let's see how they get on um, with the table toppers. And let's see if the likes of Dan Ulverstadt, Hein Bruset, Oscar Severtsen and Mikael Ratnerberg can perform as well as they did uh, in the first two games of the of the season. Then I'm going to move on to Bankska Bistrika. Um, they're also currently in the relegation round so that they, they, they've done the split you have your championship round for the night league and the relegation round they are top of the relegation round so being top of the relegation rounds once again like i mentioned earlier for burning is a positive for uc managers you know that that team is going to play only teams that were at that cutoff that were below them on the the specific log that increases potential scores from your uc athletes so always good to make use of of those specific players they play michelovka in game week 164 and they are second last uh, so that gives another opportunity for them to shine uh, players such as robert filipka um matas ruska tomataj Zaminski, and martin Romarenko are good options that have been performing well this whole season uh, so if you have them put them in your team yeah um we, we've got some um guesses coming in already for the silver pack we've got um Stickett says Rice Flabby Mabby has Hadjil Skur, um, and Azaret has Wing, um, Invincibles has Shaka, um, Grimaldo, um, Peratimeno, 
um a few congratulations for me doing well thanks guys <laughs> um so yes sneak geek you won <laughs> if that if that's if that's you <laughs> um as uno um radu has gone a uh, dehi a uh, gogula has gone wing as well so we've got a couple of wings love love the guesses guys we've even got a ronnie edwards i'm hoping i'm hoping he he goes big <laughs> this week myself because he's in a couple of my teams right speedy let's talk about the players to target for one six so I've, sele I've selected three big big players we don't always cover the the big players all at once because we want to have a bit of variety etc but uh because we we heading to the the business side of the season let's put it that way the first one is Ilkay Gundogan uh, one of the most consistent scorers in UC with a sea of green scores. Uh, this coupled with Barcelona's recent form makes him a sure selection uh, for any UC tournament. Uh, he also got an assist uh, midweek in the Champions League, which was last night, actually. Uh, they have a favor favorable fixture against Cadiz. So listen to me. If he is selected in the starting lineup, he should score well. Big if. Uh, remember, they have the second leg. So they played last night, they play this weekend, and then next week they play the second leg of the Champions League. So mm -hmm. there could be some squad rotation. Yes, they are away from home uh, to Cadiz. They are chasing Real Madrid, who potentially are maybe out of reach because I think they're still eight points ahead of Barcelona um, at this stage. Uh, so potentially they could rest some legs and think that their main focus for this season uh, will be the champ Champions League. So you need to once again uh, watch all the news, uh, see what the coach potentially alludes to. Um, and if you select anyone that you're not sure of, make sure you have cover. Yeah. And I see uh, one of our boys there sneaking it into the middle. Yes, Mr. Kai Havertz, I had to. Uh, I was fortunate when I did rip a gold pack to get a Mythic Kai Havertz. Um, he's got two goals and assists in his last two matches, uh, which are combined with consistent UC scores. Uh, he should start against Villa. Um, I think Arsenal are, yes, we might have a little bit of rotation because our squad depth looks fantastic at the moment. Uh, but I think especially against Aston Villa, we'll be wanting to play our strongest uh, team. We're obviously fighting for, for Champions League and in a three-horse tie or three horse race for the for the Premier League. So I'll foresee uh, Kai to start um, and hopefully do well against Aston Villa. All I know with the football that Aston Villa plays, uh, it should be quite an entertaining and attractive game to watch. Um, I do know Douglas Louise is injured, so that might be a little benefit uh, to us because he's really had a fantastic season for for Villa this season. Um, and I think, yeah, I think Kai will be there. Um, and I think the, he's really gelling in our team this uh, since he's joined us uh, this season and playing and playing fantastically fantastically well in, in, in no matter what role we we deploy him in so that's fantastic yeah and and there's a there's another name on the list that i can see that um i have in my card collection that i'm a big fan of uh florian Wirtz. florian Wirtz, yeah the 20 year old uh has really been one of the stars of of leverkusen season look the whole squad or the whole team has been a star, but he's really, really played well for a, for a youngster. Uh, he scored well, assisted well. Uh, as I mentioned, they played Bremen at home. So he, I'm sure he'll be uh, wanting to get that goal or assist, etc., that clinches that title for Leverkusen. Um, once again, like the other teams, they play tonight. So please monitor, see what that that lineup is, um, what, uh, what Xavi goes with. Um, and then make that relative decision. Um, I think with him being young, energetic, um, he should start. Um, but yeah, don't take my words to the back. I'm not the actual manager. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We can only go so far, can't we? <laughs> if, we exactly. had a, if we had a hotline exactly. to ask them to play certain players, it'd be great, but we don't, unfortunately. <laughs> That's it. But I think I think it's nice to cover three of those, those big teams uh, that we've got on UC that are really, uh, even though Barcelona is not, not, not first, um, we can remember when Barcelona joined us, their first three, four, five games was, was terrible, if I can 
use that term, and slowly they've started to pick up those those victories and and get that unbeaten run. Um, it might still be a little far stretch. I'm I'm not sure if there's still a a derby coming up with Real Madrid. I think there is still one, if I'm not mistaken, before the end of the season. Um, but I think it might be a little far stretch, especially the way Real Madrid's playing at the moment. Yeah. Okay. Um, just wanted to kind of check it out there for anyone who may have joined us a bit late. If you want your chance to win a silver pack, then it's the guess is the athlete with the most possessive points, please. Um, and don't forget to put your UC username next to it. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I guess we'll move on to the questions, Speedy. So if you have any questions for us, pop them in the chat now. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed that Halsey hasn't left us a random question, Speedy, this week. I mean, what are we going to do? What are we going to answer this yeah. week? There was a random question. Then. Oh, was there? Did I miss it? Yeah. Oh. oh, I'm trying to think what the rent. No, no, no. I'm trying to think what it was. Was something about uh, can you smile under water or something to that effect? <laughs> it's not in. It's not in the in the channels. So. No, no, it wasn't. It, it oh. wasn't there. No. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Has he? <laughs> um. Right. Okay. Um. Gunnar said, "Would we have virtual game weeks in the meantime while Euros take place?" And would they feature the elite Syrian teams as their season is underway? Furthermore, in the three to four weeks hole between the start of the Euros and then before the start of the new season, all tournaments would be featuring and focusing completely on elite Syrian. Right. As far as as far as I know, at this stage, when there is that that total break where we just have summer league or elite Syrian. Uh, we'll be running um, the Elite Serin, uh, uh tournaments. Um, obviously, I'm sure we will we will do some tweaks, etc., to structure it uh, for the summertime and and announce it to our our community um, in, in in due course. Um, about the virtual game weeks, I'm I'm not sure we'll be hosting any um, virtual virtual game weeks through through this through this period. Um, uh, th there's a break. Oh, there's a break. Uh, I'll have to double check on the, the Euros because the Euros does run for a period of time where there's a cup, where there's a, there's a gap. So I will have to run that past the team and see if there is anything, especially if there are, if there's no football for that period of time. Mm. Let's put it that way on UC. Yeah. When 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 is that speedy? When's that gap? You know. Sorry, I'm I don't want to lie. No, I, I, I don't want to. I, I don't want to lie. I looked. I looked at it the other day, and I can't even remember what the month was. Um, We've got a couple of questions coming in through the chat as well, which is nice. Thanks, guys. We'll get around to them. Don't worry. Stick with us. <laughs> Stick with us. Sorry, that was my bad, Speedy. I didn't mean to drop you in it there, having to look it up. <laughs> no, it's June. It's it's June. It's June. Apologies, okay. I couldn't remember if it was May or June. I did actually have a look the other day because we we're also thinking of of maybe doing something special for the community. Uh, for that, um, if you remember, we had the World Cup. It wasn't last year; it was a year before. Jeez, I've been here long. Um, <laughs> where we actually we we hosted some fantasy leagues and and um community functions for that specific event. So definitely something that we will look into for that specific period. But if we if we do not have football during that time, um, obviously there will be a discussion on on if we will have a virtual game week set up to to have something running during that period. So but we'll definitely inform you about that uh, sooner. Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um okay Uno our um our silver pack winner last week says, how will, should you be dealing this game week with players that still have important Champions League EL matches next week? For example, Saka. Yeah, I would, hmm, like I say, Arsenal potentially might be an easier one or you may be a bit more confident to play their players because they they're they're obviously going for the uh for the Premier League as well. So potentially those star names like your like your suckers, 
um, your Havits, your Odegaards, uh, your Declan Rices, uh, your your Magalis, your your um, your well, I can't think of his name. Your Saliba will be out, and your Rias, I think, would be dead on starters no matter what happens. Um, obviously, if you're a bit unsure about the rotation. Yes, you can have bench cover, but then you also open yourself up to that player coming on for 10, 20, 30-minute cameo and potentially not scoring any points. So maybe, as I alluded to earlier, using a, a bench boost, which, yes, will open up potential gaps on other positions, uh, but maybe using a do-not-play and, and having your sucker Odegaard, Martinelli, or whoever it is, uh, not Martinelli because he's a forward, but to have them there um, and whoever does play and scores the higher score will then come into your team. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think um with Arsenal we'd we'll be fairly as you say, fairly safe. We're always gonna try and put our strongest team out, I think, first and then and, unless the unless we unless we lose the next three in them. Oh oh let's not talk like that. <laughs> that didn't happen, Speedy. <laughs> Don't put that out into the universe. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, let's move on swiftly. Uh Norway's top three goalkeepers at the moment, please, from uh Kunka. Top three goalkeepers tricky. Uh, like I mentioned last weekend, he's not he, he's maybe not the, the, the best goalkeeper, but uh and it might be because they have a weak weak defense, but he, he makes the mo- he seems to make the most saves, especially this season. Uh is is uh Sandberg from from Hamkam. Uh very, very decent uh goalkeeper. Um makes saves, which means even if he does concede a goal or so, he still scores quite decently. Um, others, uh, potentially the Boda keeper, uh, Nikita Heiken, could be could be one to look at. Look, it's still early in the season. Uh, Jacob Karlstrom as well, uh, another decent uh, keeper that could be looked at at, at Norway. Uh, but like I say, your, your, your keepers are only as good as your defence at the end of the day. Um, what we try and strive ourselves for as UC managers is to select the keeper that is going to keep a clean sheet. And at the end of the day, you need your defense to assist as well. So I would say looking at a team, um, and, it, and it might be a bit early, even you can go and look at last season, but it, as we say, it's a new season. We're only two games in. So the moldy goalkeeper, they've had two clean sheets in a row. And as the games progress, have a look who's got the mo- the best defense, etc. And your percentage of getting a clean sheet will obviously increase when you play um, that specific keeper. Yeah. Um, Kai says, that is ban-worthy, Speedy, talking like that. <laughs> Kai, I'm sorry. I was only, I was only joking. I had to throw in another, another goodie. But like I said earlier, I'm, I'm confident uh, for this weekend against Aston Villa at home. I think we'll beat them. Quite happy uh, that Douglas Lu- Louise is out, not for him, but for, for us, obviously. Um, and then also, if we want to talk Champions League, quite confident about uh, next week as well um, that uh, Alfonso Davis, uh, that was that that. I think he did quite a good job against Saka yeah. in the Champions League. He's he's got he's suspended, so he's not playing. So they're going to have to put a, a new chappy uh, on on the on the side there to watch Saka, and I, and I think we can exploit them there. So yeah, don't worry, I'm still confident about both. <laughs> good stuff. Um, right, uh, Nazareth says for oh, end of season rewards, will the team of the season contain only players with best averages for the whole season? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> if you're not sure, don't that, worry. You can. No, 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 I don't want to look. It, it it is team of the season, so I think the 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 averages are taken into consideration. Yes, um, I'm just not sure if it's last fifteen, last fifteen, or 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 if it's a bit if it's a bit higher. Um, but that's very important. Obviously, that gets checked, etc. As we lead, and it'll be in in the next month or so as well, because obviously we have a global league tournament that's running currently. Um, we've got players that are shooting out for the top 50, the top 200, etc., cetera, uh, to, to earn nice rewards from uniques to mythics to epics. Um, and those team of the season uh, cards obviously become, become available for those. So I'm not going to confirm on exactly what averages are taken at the moment, uh, but it will be based on that. Just depends on the amount of, of games that they take to have those uh, 
those star players. And remember, we have a star index list as well, which is relatively new this season. I'm speaking under correction, but I, it was introduced this season. Re remember, UC season runs from the from the 1st of August up until the end of July. Um, so we we implemented that new index, uh, which 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 helps you see which players will be in your star packs uh, or your regular players or your underdog players, etc. So that could also be a criteria uh, that gets used this season to determine those um, those star players. And remember, guys, these are always unique circumstances. You do get athletes that get injured uh, inconveniently that impacts their average or their index, etc. That will all be taken uh, into consideration when doing those team of the season players or athletes yeah um i did just want to mention um to the guys uh when i pulled my gold pack earlier in case anyone was wondering who i got so i got an epic uh salverson and i got a mythic soul fans so one good one bad potentially so, you know, hit me up if anyone wants a, a Salverson. I may well be selling him off. Uh, so, you know, just just putting it out there. Uh. The, 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 saltness, the saltness, though, was a, was, a good, um, was a good pull, being a mythic as well. Um, as I mentioned, I did, I did purchase last night off the marketplace a, a epic saltness. Um, he had a very good last end of the year season. There, there is a stream of greens. I know you were a bit nervous when you saw, I think the first game he only played 45 minutes mm -hmm. and the second game he yeah. played the full 90. Um, I think I think he'll still be still be decent for them and and if if last season is anything to go by by the stream of greens uh that he pulled through for Boda I think I think it's a great card to earn. Cool. We do now have a random question from Hazzy, but before we get there, uh we've got two more questions that I can see that oh no oh, hang on we we've, we've got a couple more but um uh let me try and crack up um Haz says speedy can we get a clue between two leagues that the new EFL club is in, like League One or Two or Championship or League Two. <laughs> Try trying their best to squeeze uh, you out. Of I must say, what, 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 one thing about has he has he really knows his football? Um, I think every weekend he goes to a he goes to a game, probably midweek games as well. Um, and I, I saw there was a bit of chatter today. Obviously, Pierre uh, was around in Discord, and and Pierre must have dropped uh, some little hint. And and all I'll say is is those couple of teams that I saw that it was narrowed down to, very good narrowing down. Let's put it that way. That's Ooh. all I can say. I can't give you the league, otherwise I'll just give it to you, Hazzy. <laughs> yeah, you have to go back and uh, have a look through the Discord then. Um. Fat says, I'm looking to buy an Elite Seer and Silver pack in the player list. Is the player list already updated for the new season? Player list uh, should be updated. I think it was updated on Tuesday, if, I, if I'm if i not mistaken, or what I read in, in Discord. Um, Roro uh, answered that, so it should be updated. Um, what we try and let me, let me let you know. So, so when we get to a day when we're going to release a team, uh, we make sure that we have all the assets. The assets are perfect. They're pretty. They're looking good for our community. There's no, there's no errors, which unfortunately does it does creep in from time to time. No one's perfect. What we then do is we schedule a time. We say, okay, three o'clock. We can announce uh, the packs should be, uh, the card should be in the packs about 45 minutes later, and then we have a gentleman that makes sure he goes through all the indexes and things like that uh, to update them as well so that when they do appear in packs those specific uh, uh, players are indexed correctly and they appear in the uh, correct packs. Obviously there's injuries that, that play a part and, 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 and people's different forms and then they, they fluctuate through those indexes but that is the process that we follow to make sure everything is as perfect as possible when that first person opens up uh, whichever pack they they open whether it's a silver a gold whatever it may be on that note we do have a follow-up question but first of all has says feel free to give it to uh give it no complaints from me <laughs> um <laughs> but he's uh, he also asked would you rather two star commons or one random epic as a reward random epic i have a 
I'll tell you now if I, I see I don't have it open at the moment. Let me just tell you. I, I, I've been around. Okay, there's got. The, I've been around. I could say I would want to say the longest because there's a lot of people that have been around longer than me. Um, obviously, I don't have the collection that uh, that our our big whales um, in 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 our community have, but I have. Um, I've got nine. It's maybe not a lot compared to the world, but I've got a nine hundred and thirty-five uh, common cards. So I would just to take a chance, even if it's an underdog, I would take the random epic. I think I would. I as love well. epics. Even I, I as love... a newbie, I think even I would as well. To be honest, yeah. it's just nice when you open. I can remember back in the day, I haven't opened a jumbo um, or a basic plus pack for a while. Uh, but when when you when you used to open it because you. You had a chance of getting an epic, and then you hover, you hover your cursor yeah. <laughs> over the card, and you see that 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 purple or orange shimmer. Um, it's very exciting. <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> uh, oh, we've got one more pop in. Go on, we'll, we'll answer it. We'll answer it, even though we're getting quite close to our um, our wrap up. Is there a possibility of another league joining as only one league for summer at the moment? Nazra asks. Apologies, Nam. I, I I lost the first part of the question. That's okay. Is there a possibility of another league joining as only one league for the summer at the moment? There's always a possibility. I think it would, would be a bit short notice to to have one. But like we always say, the the, the team's focus at, at this stage, and it was mentioned in, in, in Discord a bit, bit earlier, but I think it was maybe mentioned in, in OG chat and not general chat. But what we're focusing now on is trying to get as many as the of the EFL clubs um, as possible, including your top five leagues in um, in in the world. It does not exclude what I'm saying now. Does not exclude other leagues, other clubs, other teams, etc. Those opportunities are always there. Those opportunities are always um, being looked at. What you can look at at this stage is we want to focus on top five leagues of the world, including getting as many of the EFL uh, clubs as as possible. We might not sign them for two, three, four, five year deals, but if we sign them for a season, et cetera, that continues to bring uh, um, utility to those players within um, within Ultimate Champions. Also, a lot of the EFL teams do uh, bounce between clubs within the EFL, so it's, it, it's a little bit more comfortable to not lose coverage. And as we start to expand the bigger leagues, I mean, we've got, we've got La Liga, Bundesliga, and the Premier League at the moment. So if we could grab a, a Italy uh, and one or two of the other uh, clubs, etc., then we start to cover a base, even though we've got one team, when those big clubs bounce to the other big uh, all the, the big players bounce to the other big uh, leagues, we can still maintain that coverage because we have the Opta, the Opta scoring. So, so the, that's the current plan. But like I say, it doesn't mean that this is our goal and we're not going to look at other things as well, just to, just to make that clear. Okay. Well, that was all very heavy. So Hazzy, of course, has come with another food question. I mean, you know, I, I put it out there for general, but they mostly end up being food related. But, you know, that's all good. That's all good. Um, as you would like to know, Speedy, this week, your favorite pizza topping, please. My favorite? Pizza topping. I am a something meaty kind of guy so it's got to have it's got to it's got to have really all that the, shocks the, me after last week's discussion no, the, 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 the the bacon the salami the <laughs> the ham the the cheese all of that it's got to be that is that is really what i what i enjoy and that's what i would order nine out of nine out of ten times we also have we've got we've got another pizza that's quite nice which is a it's called a tangy russian so it's got russian and onions and things like that which is also nice but my favorite is either a something meaty pizza or something meaty sub wait so they they serve up a ration on pizza <laughs> no the, the, with cut up with cut up russians on top of your on top of your pizza with the cheese and the onions what and, is a and russian? all that it's a oh don't you know what sorry terminology <laughs> it's a it's like a sausage. Oh, it's a right, sausage, okay. but, it's, but we call it a Russian because it's a it's a big, thick sausage. Sorry, I feel like we're in really dodgy territory here. Um, yeah. so, so I'll move on and say I like a Hawaiian, which might just absolutely set the world on, uh, <laughs> into some sort of kind of fight over whether there should be pineapple on pizza or not. But I quite like it. I quite like the whole, you know, sweet and savory thing. Um, we have. 
a very good stone baked place near us that makes stone baked pizza and whenever we go there I tend to have the barbecue chicken because it's very very nice they tend to do like chicken onions sweet corn and then they drizzle a really cool barbecue sauce over it so you know um oh I've got Bamworthy by Kai now from my from my Hawaiian <laughs> <laughs> from my ham and pineapple pizza i know i know it's it's you know it it it, it really does like divide people does the ham and pineapple debate i feel i feel um yeah i don't know just always like sweet and savory does anyone like those those sticks you used to get as a like in, in kids parties as well i don't know if you had these speedy where you have the cheese and the pineapple on on a little party stick or is that a british thing no, no, no. We 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 have them as as well over here, where you walk around with that stick and it's got the crisps or whatever on, and you and you and you eating it, etc. With the pineapple as well. So yeah, it it comes. It's on. It's in South Africa too. Nice, love it. Well, there you go. There's always there's always a bit of um, getting to know Nim and Speedy at the end, <laughs> thanks to Hazzy there. <laughs> Although we will have to get we'll we'll have to see what else we can find on the random question pro what was that one you thought can you smile underwater yeah i reckon you I can think it, i think it, i think it was smile i'm not sure if it was smile but it was something <laughs> to that effect yeah but we'll get we'll we'll get we'll get has to join us on one of our yes. one of our podcasts in the future yeah i'd love that has you should come on that'd be great and 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 i want like a list of 10 random questions and they can't all be food related <laughs> A getting we'll have to do a getting to know the managers at UC, I reckon, Speedy. Get some managers on and we'll do like a getting to know the manager series. That could be fun. Yes, most definitely. Most definitely. Oh, apparently the question was cry underwater. Oh. Ah yes, cry underwater. Yes, you're right, Ooh. you're right, yes. Can you? What do you reckon? I reckon. I've always been happy when I've been in a swimming pool. So. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, anything like when I'm in water, I'm yeah. very happy as well. Water, pop water, baby over here. I reckon you probably can. Yeah, just drip out into the water, surely. I don't know. Anyway, on that note, we'll wrap it up. Thank you all for joining us so, so much. We really appreciate it. So it's a thank you and a goodbye from me and Speedy. Thank you very much, guys. Good luck for the game week ahead. Make sure you make the correct selections. Watch uh, the Bayer Leverkusen game tonight, so that can help you a bit. And listen to all the news. And don't forget to check out Play Shopper. Um, and good luck. Good luck. Take care. Bye, guys. Feels like I'm caught up in a trance. Can come down all night. The city never stood a chance. With you by my side, it's all ours. So don't second guess.